In Troy's head, bells are ringing, but are they warning bells or just the bell for the next round? And the great one might have done Broadway one more time if he'd had this cat on his wing. But would that have been enough to save Les Miserables? And when the stars don't like the coach, Nero starts playing while the fiddler on the roof burns down. Today's show sounds like music with Willie Wilson, all-time great center fielder Jackie Delaney, and from WWF, Chris Jericho on OTR. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. A show you wanted, a guest you demanded, and an all-star OTR cast that makes this one a potential classic. He's the guy that you wanted. We had him once before. By popular demand, he is back. WWF superstar, a good kid from wow. Winnipeg, Manitoba. Great to welcome one of our favorites, Chris request. Jericho. Thank you very much. It's good to be a requested panel uh, returnee. Don't read too much into that. Okay. This is the guy that was requested. 1985, he won a World Series for the Kansas City Royals. His record that year of 705 at-bats, still a major league record. He was a two-time All-Star, a batting champ as well. Willie Wilson on OTR. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. I'm You're... still tired from those at-bats. <laughs> <laughs> and she's had a number of at-bats on this show. Jackie Delaney from the Fan 590 back once again, unlike Chris Jericho, because the viewers wanted it. <laughs> Today, if the NFL plucks the eyes out of Joey Galloway's head, is a great tragedy or just good business and when a guy hits the turf and can't get up do you call the stretcher or the pusher but first Wayne Gretzky is going into the Hall of Fame on Monday night he told Dave Hodge if the Rangers would have traded for Pavel Bure there's a chance that he would still be playing for New York not that Bure and Gretzky would be enough to turn around the Rangers those two plus Mario and the ghost of Jacques Plante might not be enough last night they lost again and this shot off the post which you'll see here could be the one that kills the coach Two words dominate any Ranger game these days. Fire Muckler. Should they? It's an interesting uh, interesting situation. I love the Rangers. I'm a Ranger fan. I'm a second generation uh, Ranger. The blood of the Rangers flows through these huge veins. But to fire Muckler, um, I think if they're going to fire him, they should have done it before the season. Uh, and also, I'm a huge Gretzky fan, but for him to say he would have stayed if he would have traded for Fleury. He said he might have stayed. Well, he might have stayed. Well, he probably might have stayed if they would have hired Fleury, if they would have got Fleury in there as well. Uh, I bet you, in retrospect, he's probably wishing that he would have given it another year. And that's also another reason why the Rangers are I mean, so yeah, bad. I, I think Gretzky, it's easy enough for him to say that now that it's, it's done and over with. But um, when it comes to firing the coach, you know, coaches have been fired sooner than this into the season and if that's what it's going to take to kickstart this team they have a lot of talent on that team and they a spent lot a payroll. lot of money yes. to yeah, get that talent i mean if you're a player and you got a bunch of guys going together and i think that if everybody's going together and this guy isn't who they like then you got to fire the guy because it's easier to fire a coach but what's interesting play. is the fact that the players like him Todd Harvey has come out and said, we like John Muckler. Yeah, but maybe they like him fired. too much. Maybe no. that's the problem. They like him too much, and it's, it's more of a friend. It's almost like that parent-friend syndrome. And they're not performing for him. And if that's what it's going to take to kickstart their butts, do it. It's also a vicious circle, though. If they're not performing for the coach, it's almost the inmates are running the asylum. Uh, maybe they should be performing for the coach because if you fire the coach, the Rangers are still going to suck. They have a lot of talent, but they have no chemistry. That could be John Muckler's fault, or it could be the player's yeah, fault. Yeah, but maybe that's what mixes up the now. chemistry. It I could, mean, it's been proven time and time again it could that be, it or works. Maybe they should just buckle up and start trying to play harder and, and embrace the coach's system. Scotty Bowman's not a not a peach to play for, from what I've heard either. But the Wings won the Stanley Cup. Sometimes you need the discipline, especially with high-paid, overpriced, egomaniacal athletes. Oh my, wow. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> but it, it, you know what, let's go back to the Canadians a few years back. They weren't playing for a guy like Pat Burns. Okay, so he's mm -hmm. on the same level as, say, a Scotty Bowman. They, they bring in a, a Jacques Demers kind of guy who's, you know, patting them on the back and they start playing for him. Then he stopped working, then you, you bring in a bad guy again. And I, I think that's what it's a, more about. And unfortunately, it's a numbers game, and John Muckler, his time is up. Speaking of asylums and inmates running it, Mike Sosha has just been hired to manage the Anaheim Angels. And the quote that I love from Sosha is, we'll do everything we can to make Anaheim a fun place this summer. He takes over from Terry Collins. I'm sorry? It's not supposed to be fun. It's a job. And if you have a job, you're supposed to go out there and you're supposed to do it. 
So uh, it's, it's fun if you're winning. Winning solves a lot of things. But as a player, you're supposed to have the good and the bad, and it's not supposed to be, I'm just going to have fun, and, and everybody else just goes along and says, we're going to have fun, and you don't win. It likes, it's nice to win and have fun, not just have fun. But maybe that's what they need now. It's, it's kind of the same situation. Maybe that, that's what they need. They, they've had it. They've been in a position where they haven't liked the person that they're playing for, and they, they haven't been having fun, so they haven't been going out there and giving it 110%. Maybe now this will work for a couple of years. Well, I don't think that's, that's the case. I mean, you, you're supposed to work for whoever you, you, you work for, and you know, you're supposed to give them 110% if you can. And so I feel that if a guy goes out there and just because he doesn't like a player, he's getting paid to do a job. So, I mean, you can have fun off the field. But when you're playing, you want to have fun and win and not just have fun. The thing is, too, though, I mean, having fun is part of a job which is going to give you the confidence to start playing well, whether it be playing baseball or whether you're working at 7-Eleven. If you hate your job and you don't want to show up for work every day, you're not going to give 100%. If you love your job and, and you're having fun doing it, uh, that can also take away a lot of the pain of losing as, if you're enjoying yourself and you know that maybe tomorrow there's another day. Uh, if you totally hate, you know, pouring Slurpees at 7-Eleven, then you don't want to show up for work. If you like it, then you're going to be there and you want to sweep yeah, the floors. Well, and yeah, but the different These guys pouring are pouring Slurpees, Slurpees though. Right. Yeah, exactly. If you're making 84 million, you can have fun anywhere. Yeah, but you're talking, once again, you're talking about professional athletes. They live in their own little world and they're, and they're basically well, grown up babies. Let's kick them out of that on their own. But, but the, isn't, isn't it this kind of behavior, appointing a manager, a guy who can create fun in the fun, in the fun house, in the clubhouse, <laughs> isn't that what creates the little babies? Well, I mean, it, 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 it creates a little bit... Well, it's, see, it's hard because you're talking about athletes. They're, they're different. For, for me... No, we're talking I'm about having, baseball players, Chris. Well, <laughs> there you go, which is even Come another on, story man. right wait there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're athletes. <laughs> if you're having fun uh, in the dressing room, you're going to want to produce. If you're not having fun, you might want to... You don't care what's going on. But I know it's happened to me before. If you're not having fun at your job, you don't really care what happens. It takes a lot of the confidence factor. Yeah, but a lot of that is created by the players. I mean, the manager is only one guy, okay? So he can only make it so much fun uh, you have to go out and you got to do everything that you can in your power to make it fun not just to depend on somebody else to make it fun so winning to me if you go out and you players group together and you play as a team and you win then you're going to have fun you if know you're what, losing though, in anything you're not going to have fun I, I think that's your system though you're going to play with under his umbrella of what he wants you to do and it's either going to work or not and if it works that's what you want I think it depends on the person, too, because just in any walk of life, I mean, I'm the type of person, when I go to work, I take pride in the fact that I want to do the best job, and even if I don't have fun doing it. But some people don't work that way. Some people, it's all about them. Is it Vince McMahon's job, as we go to break, let me ask you this, to create a fun environment for Chris Jericho to earn his money? It's Vince McMahon's job to pr provide the best possible talent and the best possible storylines, which is going to result in you giving the best possible effort and result in you having fun. Yes, it is his responsibility to do that. If he does not do that, then you end up like Eric Bischoff's reign in WCW, where nobody cares. Everybody's given a half, uh, half arsed effort, if I'm allowed to say that, and the whole company falls apart. He is Chris Jericho, now a superstar in the WWF. He is Willie Wilson, was a superstar in Major League Baseball. I'll ask you what you're up to a little bit later on in the show, and she is superstar radio announcer Jackie Delaney. When we return, Troy Aikman, should he return after too many shots in the head? Uh, has he won a Super Bowl ring? He's got two of them. Well, I mean, he's, he's got nothing else to accomplish. But in pro sports, it's always we want more. It's always about money, too. So if they're going to offer him a big contract and, and double his salary, you'll see him playing. No, but it's Doctors also... Know it or not. You know, in so many ways, I feel like this is my playing field. Uh, and it's so important that all of you have fun. Is everybody having fun? No. Is, you're not having fun? I'm not fun? having fun at all. Your questions are horrible, your presentation is terrible, and your guests have been ridiculous. Oh, wait, no. Hold oh, up there. <laughs> excluding me. Now you're getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick on I'm him. I'm sorry, what did you say? Egomaniacal? Egomaniacal. <laughs> all right. He's going to hit me with his, with his World Series ring and knock me right out, so I better be quiet. Let me tell you about Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman continues to be a hurt for the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are 5-4. and four. They play Arizona this weekend. A lot of people feel when they start to get healthy, Troy Aikman could conceivably, if he's playing, lead them to some definite, uh, impressive postseason performances. Here's the question I have for you. Two concussions in less than a week, seven in his career, even if the doctor gives him the go-ahead to play, is it time for someone to step back and say, Troy, hey, I'm looking out for you. Don't return. No. I think it's up to Troy. And I think if Troy gets a doctor's opinion, if Troy uh, has a family around, 
then Troy should be able to make the decision that he wants to uh, play or not play. Yeah, I think it's up to those closest to him and him. It's, I mean, it's ultimately his responsibility. We're all responsible for our own well-being. But he also has a responsibility to his team and to his fans. I mean, if he gets a doctor's clearance, then the doctor's saying it's okay for him to play, and he should get out there and perform for the people who pay his salary. You think he should get? No, I think it should be his decision. Well, if the doctor says that he's okay, then then yeah. But see, that's the problem with playing. concussions, and that's why it's always been kind of an, an iffy situation. With concussions, it's not tangible. Like you know, it's it's not there for you to see. And I think that's why, too, in years past in, in hockey and football, so many guys now are starting to realize just how much damage they have done to themselves. So and it's if, because it's not tangible. Yeah, that's right. So if he, if he feels he's ready to play, then he should play. But just to have the doctor say, go play, because all doctors aren't right, obviously. No. That's the thing. And, and, you know, su suppose the doctor says, yeah, you're cleared to play. Would we feel as though he let down the Dallas Cowboy fans if he says, no, I'm going to retire. I'm going to step back and go, even though I'm getting the clearance. Would we feel like he had let them down? The fans probably would. Yeah, but... And doesn't fans. that create enormous pressure? Well, fans always want more, and, and he's probably reached the peak of his career, and he probably has, what, two, three more years left to begin with anyways. So, um, obviously, I, I think if the doctor says it's okay for him to play, well, then it's obviously, of course, it's his final decision. If he hadn't accomplished as much as he had, uh, has he won a Super Bowl ring? He's got two of them. Well, I mean, he's got nothing else to accomplish. But in pro sports, it's always we want more. It's always about money, too. So if they're going to offer him a big contract and, and double his salary, you'll see him playing. No, but it's, Doctors also, know it or not. it's also the expectation of, of pro athletes not feeling pain, pro athletes feeling superhuman. We, as fans, demand that our athletes play through pain. Yeah, and they always say the athlete's the last one to, to recognize it. But <clears throat> I think nowadays, because a lot of the guys are getting so much money, they seem to recognize things a little quicker and uh, if I feel that if he's not ready to play then he should not go out there no matter what the doctor says no matter what the fans say and yeah it is pressure that he wants to go out there it's pressure he wants to perform it's pressure that uh, he doesn't have Michael Irving there and uh, all his running backs uh, Emmett Smith but if he sees all that he knows that he's not going to play as well because they're going to be shooting after him because he's the one of the three that's right. left. You've also made a good point too when you say that athletes kind of have a different uh, way about them. They kind of have their own set of rules and an injury that might keep an average Joe out for two or three months or even possible retirement, an athlete will be willing and ready to come back from right. in a shorter period of time. So uh, in his own mind, even if maybe he shouldn't come back, he probably will because he feels responsibility to the fans and plus them, ben them Benjamins do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamins. <laughs> Gotta get them Benjamins. But I guess the issue, what you're trying to get at is should the fans get on him if he decides not to play? Is that what you're really... Well, I think it all comes down to the expectation of society on an athlete and the expectation that that athlete places on his or herself. And I think it becomes a very serious issue because the difference between playing and not playing can all often be in a pill bottle. Yeah, but mm -hmm. are they looking at the athlete, or are they looking at what the athlete makes? And I think a lot of people look at what the athlete makes, and then they make their own opinion, instead of looking at the guy himself or the woman, excuse me. So, you well, mean, that's I, what I, I think. I think most rash, rational fans, which is kind of an oxymoron. An oxymoron? But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think most rational fans, the way they look at it, it really depends on the athlete. Like someone, when it, someone like Elvis Stoiko goes down with a groin injury, People really believe that he wasn't able to go out there and, and do it. Uh, now, if, if it's the type of athlete that it's like, you know, this thing one day, this thing another day, I think they're going to kind of look at it like, well, yeah, here he goes right, again. But, but also, as, as much as Aikman has contributed and much as he's accomplished, if he did decide to retire, I don't think you see too much of a backlash. No, I don't either. Well, All right. Backlash. Maybe not for Troy Aikman, but for an assistant coach at St. John's University in soccer, the backlash cost him his job simply because he said, I don't want to wear the swoosh when OTR returns. Is he that hard up for money that he has to wear to cause this much problems by putting stickers under his, his face that says, you know... Uh, yeah, but, well, I know that when you... Stride X or When you got your batting gloves and you show it <laughs> in the paper, they send you five extra grand. We've learned of an interesting story. St. John's University soccer, an assistant coach, was forced to resign. And he was forced to resign because of his public stance against 
Nike, a company. This is the way he alleges it in his lawsuit against St. John's University. He says that he came out publicly and said that it was inappropriate for him to wear a Nike swoosh because of Nike's hiring practices in Asia. He didn't want to wear the swoosh. They ended up forcing him to resign. He's suing them. Should a university or a pro team be able to force a coach or an assistant coach or a player to wear a certain product? Yes. If they have a contract, if they have a deal with them, and you know that going in, I, you know what? I know what you're going to say, or I think. It's, you know, maybe, maybe the issue is should they even have the deal, and I don't think they should because I, I agree with his stance on that. Unfortunately, the school has a deal with them, and he has to take part in that. No, I don't think that that should do that. I think that a player or anyone should have the right to go wear what they want to wear, make what they want to make, and not be bind to just what the owner. But McDonald's or the guy employees wants. have to wear this, uniforms. This, you know, when, when it's you part go, of the When uniform. you played with the Royals, did you have to wear the team uniform? Yeah, the team uniform. Right, but and so you have to wear everything that's encompassed on the team uniform. Yeah, but exactly. we, had, logo. We, we had our own gloves. We had our own glove contract. We had our own batting glove contract. Right. We had our own shoe contract. And the guy that's making all the money here is uh, the owner. Right, but the, but the way it is now, though, a lot of teams do have contracts with Nike, like uh, the CFL has a deal with Adidas. None of the certain players are designated on each team that can wear mm. something other than Adidas. Everybody else has to wear Adidas. Right. You cannot have a Nike Swiss showing, and if you don't like it, too bad. You'll get fined. The thing is, does it, does it stink that you have to do that? Yes, but that's corporate sports. Yeah. I mean, if they pay the contract, you have to wear the <coughs> uniform. I think it sucks that the, that the corporations have taken over all sports anyways, because it takes away all of the actual love and respect for the sport. It's all about money. But, having said that, if you yeah. sign the contract with the company, mm -hmm. this is the uniform, you put it on or you get out, you didn't wear it for moral reasons, and I respect that, but that's just corporations. Well, you play I, by the corporate rules that. or you get the heck out of Dodge, you know? I understand that, uh, you know, you, you want to abide by certain things, but there are certain things that you got to give the player, too. I mean, he just can't uh, do everything the owners or the, uh, the uh, corporate people want. And I just feel that if you don't give him his little bit of rights, then he's not going to be happy. <laughs> to that. Well, what's interesting fun. is we're talking uniform, but there's a very complex situation that exists, or the NFL doesn't think it's that complex, with Joey Galloway. Wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks. Underneath his eyes, you can see that he is wearing a sticker, and that's, I guess, to prevent glare. But on that sticker was a corporate logo, and the league has told him he is never to wear that logo again on the sticker. That's on his body, not on the uniform. Do they have a right to tell him that? Yes. Same, well, it goes back to the Adidas with the CFL. You can't, no. you can't have a player no. wearing a swoosh if they have a contract with Adidas. No, no, no. That's just like saying, you know, remember the old NFL when you had to, you did a dance in the end zone? Mm -hmm. Everybody loved that. And the NFL took it away. So for me, if a guy can't promote himself, Dion promotes himself. Everybody promotes themselves. I, I agree with what you're saying about they should be able to promote themselves. Unfortunately, they're stuck in a situation where these deals are made, and unfortunately, they, ha they have yeah. to go along with it. First of all, I don't see what the big deal was in the first place. You couldn't even see what it said. It was an absolutely ridiculous way of promoting a little strip under your thing. Let's just show a close-up of close <laughs> his face. I think. 500 calls the company received the next day from that. That's unbelievable, because I, I would never have noticed that if you didn't point it out. And nobody, seen, nobody notices it but the company. The company, right. The NFL. So everybody else... But uh, uh, once again, though, it's the, it's, it's, it's the two sides of the coin. I mean, if you went up there wearing a sandwich board on your uniform that said, you know, uh, eat at Joe's in the front and, you know, <laughs> good hamburgers on the back, that's obviously ridiculous. You shouldn't do it. It's the same idea having a little sticker on it. I mean, is he, is he that hard up for money that he has to wear, cause this much problems by putting stickers under his, his face that says, you know... Uh, yeah, but, well, I know that when you... Stride X or whatever. When you got your batting gloves and you show it in the <laughs> paper, they send you five extra grand. Right. You know, so if you have your, your Louisville slugger bat and your batting gloves and it shows up in like Newsweek or Baseball Weekly, they send you money in the mail. So maybe he does need the money, but you can't fault him for doing it, at least giving it a try. You got, you got five extra grand for showing your gloves? <laughs> yeah. That's a good deal. Yeah. What, hold on. What time is it here? Oh, it's time to go to break. <laughs> Right. And uh, as we go to break, I'll always tell our viewers that <laughs> we want to know what you think of the show and the issues. Michael, is it true? Is it happening Tuesday? I don't believe it. I've been waiting for over a year. Gene and Liam, round number three. Now I can rest in peace, which may be what Liam says when he's on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Gene Mack, Liam McGuire. Negotiations have taken place for over a year. It will happen. There's our website. There's our email. There's our fax number. Here's why we want them back so badly. And I'm a What's that? You gotta what put a versus in the middle of that.
the I law. I think it was the... almost inherent on those two names. Oh, okay. You directing the show or just no? No, I didn't okay. even know we were on the air, so I wouldn't have said anything. So usually when I start you might talking, want to edit that part. Okay. <laughs> Jackie Delaney, what's up with you? The website, as always, anybody uh, across Canada, across the world, actually can tune into the fan. It's fan590.com, and it's a new, improved, in connection with Slam Sports. Willie Wilson, thanks for joining us. What a pleasure to meet you. Never got Thank the sure. chance uh, when you were playing. What's up with you? I'm a chairman of uh, Digital Communications. Uh, we design cordless home phones and caller IDs, and uh, we're right here off Leslie. I still hate you from 85 um, when your Royals beat the Blue Jays, but you're a nice guy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Chris Jericho, uh, lots of things going on, of course, with the WWF. Yes, uh, tomorrow, Sky Dome at 5 p.m. It should be a sellout, so if you don't have tickets yet, you need to get one to come down and see Canada's newest superhero, Y2J in Is action. Edge coming? Oh, sorry. Oh, gee, you son of a... <laughs> uh, and then we're also down in uh, Mississauga at the Toys R Us, so uh, bring all your Jericho toys down and... Uh, no Edge toys, though, and no Michael Landsberg dolls either. Oh, wait, there isn't any. <laughs> <laughs> like I'd really want a doll. <laughs> yeah. Just good. There's a big difference between playing with them, buddy, and having them named after you. Oh, yeah. Stone Cold did not wrestle in the Survivor Series. Yes. Will he come back? I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, storyline-wise, it seems pretty serious. Behind the scenes-wise, I still don't really know for sure. Um, I probably, I mean, his neck was bothering him ever since the pile driver from the late great Owen Hart in 97 Survivor Series, so... Who knows what's going to happen? I'm not sure. You know, you look at him, you look at Undertaker, Mick Foley's obviously hurting. Is your sport just too tough to go the distance now? Uh, in some ways, yeah. I mean, you look at guys, you look at a guy like Stone Cold, I mean, that was just a, a freak accident. You know, you look at a guy like Mankind, well, it's, it's kind of surprising that he can still walk, to be honest with you, because he's, you know, because you know, the danger that he took and everything that he took. Chris, so. got to cut you off. What a pleasure to see you. What a pleasure to meet you, Willie Wilson. Jackie Delaney, thanks for joining us on Off the Record. And we'll have Mick Foley as well. He'll be talking about Nobody this. cuts me off. I want to off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's clothing, courtesy for you. Right now, we'll put those Liam and Gina to, to, to shame. Come on, let's go.